Welcome to Kermode Uncut. Look, the Christmas tree is trimmed, the Christmas jumper is on, and most importantly, the Christmas radio time's in. I don't know about you, but as far as I'm concerned, Christmas radio times means Christmas has begun. It's a weighty tome, however, and you need to be guided through it. Here are my picks of the things that are on television this Christmas, because everybody always talks about Christmas movies, you know, going to the cinema. We all know it's on television that most of the business happens. Let's start off with Sunday the 22nd. Never Let Me Go is on, and I picked this out because at the time when it came out, people were a little bit sniffy about it. It's kind of future dystopian sci-fi movie. I really liked it, and one of the things I like best about it is it has a fantastic performance by Keira Knightley. She's kind of playing second fiddle, and you may know that in the past I've not been overly kind about Keira Knightley, but actually I think she's a really good actress now, and she's really good in Never Let Me Go. Also on that same day, over on ITV2, The Iron Giant, which is always worth checking out. Moving on to Christmas Eve now, unsurprisingly, in the Radio Times, Barry Norman's film of the day is It's a Wonderful Life, a brilliant choice. You cannot go through Christmas without It's a Wonderful Life. Remember, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. But also on Christmas Eve, Splash, which is a fantastic film. For me, still one of Tom Hanks' best performances. I mean, I know he's tipped to get an Oscar nomination for Captain Phillips, and rightly so. He should have been nominated for Splash. It was such a great film, brilliantly directed by Ron Howard, and one of the few films on which Quentin Tarantino and I are in complete agreement. Also on Christmas Eve, a chance to see The Awakening, which is a really lovely British ghost story. It was kind of overlooked when it first came out, didn't get the reviews that it deserved, but it's showing on BBC Two on Christmas Eve, and it is well worth checking out, as indeed are both Gremlins and the Titfield Thunderbolt. On to the big day itself, Christmas Day, and the big movie on Christmas Day is Toy Story 3. Now, as I'm sure you know, I think the Toy Story trilogy is pretty near perfect. I mean, it's up there with Before Sunrise and Before Sunset and Before Midnight, which I absolutely love as well. Toy Story 3 is the big one. We also have, of course, it's Christmas Day, so we have Singing in the Rain, we have Casablanca, we have The Red Shoes. Don't miss out, however, on The Princess and the Frog, which is one of the most overlooked of Disney's recent features. Fantastic animation, wonderful songs, really good voice characterizations, and never got appreciated in the way it should have done. Make this a chance to catch up with Princess and the Frog. If you're looking for something a little more challenging, A Matter of Life and Death is over on Channel 4, still one of the greatest movies ever made, but snuggled away in the schedule, The Troll Hunter. Mmm, nice. On to Boxing Day, and once again, the old favourites are there, most notably Wizard of Oz. But for me, the pick of Boxing Day is Wallace and Gromit in The Curse of the Were-Rabbit on BBC One. You may remember some years ago, I gave the Kermode Award for Best Cinematography to Wallace and Gromit in The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. They are fantastic films, brilliantly written, really, really funny, wonderfully animated. But they're shot in a way that makes them look better than most feature films around. They really understand great lighting at Aardman. That's what makes their films great films, rather than just great animations. As always, over on Film 4, there's something for someone with these slightly more sour tooth sightseers. Nuts in May with axes, although I can't call it that out loud because the last time I said that, Ben Wheatley hit me with an axe. Then looking ahead beyond Christmas, one of the hidden treats in the schedule on Sunday the 29th, not Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, surprisingly enough, but Inkheart. Directed by Ian Softley, who I really like, he made Backbeat, and Hackers, which we showed at the Larmetry Tree Festival some years ago, went down an absolute storm. Inkheart is a really terrific, intelligent fantasy that, again, got completely overlooked by critics and audiences when it first came out. Check it out on television, on Channel 4, on Sunday the 29th. Moving on to New Year's Eve. Now, Barry Norman's choice in the Radio Times is, of course, The Godfather, which is playing on Film 4. I, however, am going to go for something buried over here in the schedules at ITV, The Burbs. Why? It's a great film, it's really strange, really twisted, but most importantly, it features Bruce Dern. And incidentally, if you haven't seen Nebraska yet, make that right immediately. You need to see Nebraska in the cinema. It's a film that you need to see projected, and Bruce Dern has never been better. On to New Year's Day, where ITV's Harry Potter season finishes with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, which I thought was really terrific. I mean, it is genuinely dark, and it's a very, very good conclusion to a series, which got better and better as the movies progressed. However... I'd like to direct your attention to, over on BBC Two, The Terminal. Again, very sniffy reviews. For me, one of Spielberg's more interesting films with a great central performance by Tom Hanks. I know it's not perfect, but I really like it. However, it's time to stand up and be counted. For me, and indeed for Barry Norman in the Radio Times, film of the day on New Year's Day is Love Actually. Now, I know, I know it's too long. I know it's overly baggy. I know it's overly sentimental. And I know little bits of it are particularly silly and crass. But it's worth it for that one scene in which Emma Thompson cries quietly on her own. Emma Thompson walks on water. That's a reason to watch Love Actually again and again and again. Happy Christmas.